Good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to shout that every day. When you rise, you can shout that at home. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. For he has died for our sins and went into the grave for us and then came out of the grave for us so that we too might rise again. This morning we're using the order of service on page 151. Let us begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Amen These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtues and godly living, that together with them, we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first lesson for this, the Feast of All Saints, is from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 7. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The epistle is from 1 John, chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on, a, on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The story is told in many and various ways, and we love it every time. In fact, we can't get enough of it. It's the, the rags to riches story, you know. It's the nobody becomes somebody story. It's the hated becomes loved story. It's the reason you're so happy for Cinderella and you cheered for maybe you remember that singer several years back who was horribly uh, messed up in a fire who could sing so beautifully. It's the reason there's a lot of Rocky movies. And it's why you read The Ugly Duckling to your children or grandchildren. The characters don't matter so much and the setting doesn't matter all that much either. What's the best thing about it is the happy ending. When we think of Cinderella, we're not thinking of where she came from or where she began, mopping the floors for her wicked stepsisters, but rather where she ends up, gleaming with beauty, married to a prince. And we easily forget Rocky's days of, uh, as a nobody. We remember him as a somebody the one who was the world champ. Owen the ugly duckling was homely, but who cares? He ends up as a, a beautiful white swan. We love when everything comes out all right in the end. We'll love to hear these stories as long as we live. But we all know it's just a story, just an escape, for things just don't happen like that here in the kingdom of earth. It's just fantasy, because if the story were realistic, then Cinderella would have wrinkles and complain about old age. <laughs> If it were real, Rocky would get Alzheimer's. And that swan would one day be found dead at the side of the river. As much as we love to hear, they lived happily ever after, we know it just doesn't happen here on earth. There's no place you can go on this earth where the mortality rate is less than 100%. For we live in the land of sin and death. And the curse touches everything. When you walk out of the theater, you're walking back into a desperate world filled with desperate people all doing desperate things to find happiness. But there is no real happiness here. What Thoreau said is true. The mass of men lead, li lead lives of quiet desperation. And they're so desperate that they'll reach out to find anything to feel good and to escape. Pills, drugs, can of Budweiser, the remote control, the computer keyboard. Things are so sad here on Earth that eating to live 
is no longer the norm. Now we cram a big portion down because that's where we find comfort and happiness. If you walk out of the theater and into a world where more and more people literally cannot drag themselves out of bed, where people work mind-numbing, dead-end jobs, a world where that impossible family situation can never be resolved. A world where people don't want to get married because chances that two selfish people living together, well, it just won't work. Siblings who were such buddies when they were young now estranged from one another. No wonder the psalmist says that we end our years with a sigh. Or that the catechism calls this world this veil of tears. And you've not only shed your share of them, You've caused them too. For as much as we want to blame someone else for our unhappiness, we truly know that the cause for most of our misery is ourselves. How many times have you hurt the ones you're supposed to have loved? Today we turn the clocks back one hour. But what we really want to do is to turn the clock of our lives back and get a do-over. Take away all the regrets we have and the guilt we feel. But we can't. This is real life. And we are real sinners. Poor, miserable, pitiable sinners. <coughs> we don't have the ability. And we lack the desire to love, to forgive, to meet God's expectations and find some permanent happiness here on earth. Where is the story for a poor man like me? Well, on All Saints Day, it's a good, it is good for us to remember that there is one. But it's not a rags to riches story. In fact, it's the opposite. It's not a story cooked up in the, by some human storyteller, but it comes straight from the mind of God who laid out its plot before the foundation of the world. It's the greatest story ever told. But it comes to us from another kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. And it's better than rags to riches. It's riches to rags. It's about the greatest saint becoming the worst sinner. It's about the most beloved son becoming for your sake the most hated criminal. It's the greatest somebody becoming the biggest nobody on the cross so that you might receive a name and actually be very special in God's sight. The shepherd who for your sake became the lamb 
who takes away the sin of the world. Without this story, there is no lasting happiness. Without this story, there are no happy endings or living happily ever after. Without this riches to rags story, which shows how much God loves man, there are no white robes and palm branches. Without this story, everybody's life just becomes a journey to eternal death and ruin. So while we were turning our clocks back this morning, God this morning in Revelation was preparing for us to glimpse beyond all time where there's nothing but happiness. But those in heaven aren't those who got a do-over or a second chance or even just a, a little purging. They too were ungodly, unholy, unrighteous, full of regret, sinners, just like you. But the Lamb's blood covered them and made them saints. No wonder that's all they sing about in heaven. It's that riches to rags story that echoes in the vaults of heaven and which we sing about too. There's no better story. The story is all about the Lamb. And it's not just a fantasy, an escape of some sort. It brings true, lasting happiness and righteousness for sinners. For the same lamb they worship in heaven is the same lamb who took away the sins of the world, who dealt with your guilt and your regrets on the cross and rose again from the dead to bring his peace and gladness into this veil of tears and unhappiness. For this is why Jesus came to preach good news to the poor in spirit. To you. To tell you this morning that yours is the kingdom of heaven. That you are children of God now. It's something given. Just as the Lamb is again given to you this morning from this holy altar. The Lamb sacrificed, risen from the dead, placed into your mouth this morning. This is real. And this is pure joy. Pure, living happily ever after joy that is all yours because of this lamb. And it's given freely. Oh, it sounds too good to be true, but don't worry. Jesus has declared you blessed. Your carriage won't turn into a pumpkin. You won't ever have to work like Rocky to be somebody in God's kingdom. Baptized into Christ, you are already somebody. One of his saints. And God won't ever remember what an ugly duckling you once were 
for he sees you only as you are now. Beautiful. With his salvation covering you. You are his saints. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us arise and confess that faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. As is our custom on All Saints Day, we read the names of the saints who have departed from our midst during this past year. And we also use the Bible verse that was used at their funerals for their sermon. Roger Webb. June, looking for John chapter 3, verse 13. Christine Freed. First Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 57. Gordon Arnold, John 3, 16 to 18. Vera Sessler, John 14, verses 1 to 6. Almighty God, in whose glorious presence live all who depart in the Lord, 
and before whom all the saints of the faithful who are delivered from the burden of the flesh are in joy and happiness. We give you hearty thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. And we humbly implore your mercy that we, together with all who have departed in the saving faith, may have our perfect consummation and bliss in both body and soul, in your eternal and everlasting glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning we also want to remember in our prayers the family of Clyde Wacker, who was called to his eternal home on Friday, and also the family of Rhonda Green, who was called to her eternal home on Friday. O oh, oh Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls and all things into your keeping. Deliver us in your righteousness from all that would harm the body or assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, send your spirit to the ministers of the church who bring the good news of Christ's death and resurrection that they may work through the preaching of this gospel to gather the lost, kindle faith in those who do not yet believe, and sustain us all to the day of Christ's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gentle Lord, visit the homes of your people, that they may be places where faith is nurtured and where we learn to live our new lives in holiness and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are the persecuted who suffer for your sake and whose witness calls all to faithfulness. Bring peace to the nations, make our leaders wise, just, and honorable, and deliver us from terror, violence, and oppression. We especially ask for your care and protection for Nick as he is deployed to the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, comfort us by your abiding presence and satisfy all who call on you in need, especially Barb, Rebecca, Neil, Sean, and AJ, Addie, Paulette, Laurie, Dave, Pam, Daryl, Dana, Mary Alice, Dan, Dustin, Steve. Grant them patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, release them from their afflictions. Almighty God, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, deal graciously with the families of Clyde and Rolanda, and all who mourn, that casting every care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, be with your church and all her members who belong to you by baptism and faith. At the bidding of the Lamb, our shepherd, give us ears to hear your word and faith to receive him in his blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be brought to everlasting life with the faithful who have gone before us, who now rest from their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Father, we give you thanks that you have washed us in the blood of the Lamb, written our names in the book of life, and made us a royal priesthood and heirs of an eternal inheritance. Though we are unworthy of your saving grace, we pray you to hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom, and through whom, all honor and glory is yours, Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, in the communion of all your saints, gathered into the one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me.